Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'm going to be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's Advanced Problem of the Week asks you to calculate uh, the gradient of this function here, which is a function of tau and kappa, at uh, tau kappa is equal to 1, 5. And this is just to clarify here that we have a function. The function is at um, is of tau and kappa. So tau is going to be equal to 1, kappa is going to be equal to 5. OK, so we're going to go ahead and calculate the gradient vector first. So the gradient, I'll just kind of simplify this notation. So the gradient of this here is going to be equal to partial of the function um, at uh, tau, and then um, partial of the function at kappa, just for clarity's sake there. OK, so we're going to go ahead and evaluate the partial derivative of this function here at tau. Uh, partial derivative, excuse me, with respect to tau. So we're going to go ahead and use the quotient rule here. So we're going to have a very large function here. So we're going to use a quotient rule because we see that in the numerator we have uh, something that depends on tau. In the denominator, we also have something depending on tau. So we can use a quotient rule. So the quotient rule, so we have, we're going to start off with uh, low, so kappa minus tau cubed, um, and the derivative of the numerator, so with respect to tau, which is going to be kappa squared over 1 plus tau squared. So low d high less high d low, so less high, so kappa squared just copying down our tangent tau. Um, and the denominator, uh, okay, so low d high less high d low. So we dif differentiate the denominator with respect to tau. <coughs> it's going to be negative 3 tau squared. And we put underneath everything here, um, low squared will go. So the denominator squared. So kappa minus tau cubed. Kappa minus tau cubed. All squared. So that's going to be the first um, of the constituent uh, component functions here. So um, the partial derivative of the function with respect to tau. So now we need to take the partial derivative of the function with respect to kappa to get the second component in our uh, gradient vector here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing because we see in the numerator we have something depending on kappa. And in the denominator we have something depending on kappa. So we need to use a quotient rule. So I'm going to go ahead and try to crunch this down here a little bit. There's lots of, it's very, kind of very messy. There's lots of um, stuff going on. Okay, so uh, this is the first component here. And the second component, so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. So low, so low d high, so kappa minus tau squared tau cubed, kappa minus tau cubed, d high, so differentiate, so we have 2 kappa, <clears throat> 2 kappa times arctangent of tau, so low d high less high d low, so minus kappa squared, arctangent of tau, uh, times the derivative of the denominator with respect to kappa, which is just going to be 1, um, and underneath everything, Blue squared will go. So we're going to have the same thing as we have here, which is kappa minus tau cubed, all squared. Kappa minus tau cubed, all squared. Okay, so this all here is going to be our gradient vector. So this is what we have. So now what we need to do is we need to evaluate, we need to evaluate this at uh, tau is equal to 1, kappa is equal to 5. Okay, so when we evaluate the gradient, which is just this down here. I'm going to evaluate this uh, at tau is equal to 1, kappa is equal to 5. We end up getting here. OK, so everywhere we see a tau, we plug in 1. And everywhere we see a kappa, we plug in 5. So we'll do this component by component. So we have uh, 5 minus 1 cubed. So that's going to be 5 minus 1. All times uh, 5 squared over. Um, 5 squared over 1 plus 1 squared. So we have 25 over 2. This is all over 2 here. Uh, minus 5 squared. So minus 25 times arctangent 1. Minus 25. OK, arctangent of 1. In this case, we're just going to put uh, pi, uh, excuse me, pi over 4. Because arctangent at pi over 4 is equal to 1. Because uh, the sine component is equal to root 2 over 2. And um, the cosine component is also equal to root 2 over 2. <clears throat> so 25 times pi 
over 4. Okay, and so we have a negative 3 tau squared, and tau is equal to 1, so we have negative 3 here. And, and this in the denominator, so kappa minus tau cubed, so 5 minus 1 is going to be 4. 4 squared is going to be 16. So that's the first component. The second component, I'll just erase this as I go, because it's kind of getting all jumbled up here. Okay, excellent. So we have one component to go, and I can simplify things down. So we have here kappa minus tau cubed, so 5 minus 1 cubed, so 5 minus 1. This is the first component here. So in the numerator, 5 minus 1. We have 2 kappa, arctangent of tau, so 2 kappa, so that's going to be 2 times 5, which is 10. And as we said before, arctangent of 1 is going to be uh, pi over 4 minus kappa squared arctangent tau, so kappa squared, so 5 squared 25. Arctangent tau, as we said before, is going to be pi over 4. Okay, excellent. So in the denominator then, we're going to have kappa minus tau cubed, all squared. So 5 minus 1 cubed, so 5 minus 1 is 4. Quantity squared is going to be 16. Okay, excellent. So now we have evaluated our function, our gradient vector, excuse me, um, at the point 1, 5. And so now what we need to do is we need to simplify this down into something that's a little bit less ugly because we have lots of stuff going on here. And we can, we're going to be able to simplify it down into something that looks a little bit more condensed and more simple and simpler. So, okay, so what we're going to do to simplify our lives right at the beginning is we notice that we have here 1 over 16, 1 over 16 is going to be a common term with both of these uh, component functions here. So we're going to bring out a 1 over 16. And I'm going to start simplifying this. So we have 5 minus 1, which is 4. So if we have 4 here, 4 divided by 2, so we can just cancel out the 2 in the denominator. We're going to have uh, 2 here. So 2 times 25 <clears throat> is going to be 50 minus, so 25, negative 25 times negative 3 is going to be 75. So we have plus 75 times pi over 4. So we can just leave this for now, 75 pi over 4. So that's going to be our first component here because we already, we already pulled out the 1 over 16 from both components. So now we have here, we're going to do the same thing. So 5 minus 1 is 4. And we, as we see here, we have 4 times 10 times pi over 4. So we have a 4 in the numerator and the 4 in the denominator. We just cancel them out. So we're going to end up having 10 times pi. So 10 pi minus 25 pi over 4. Okay, so we're almost done. We're going to have a couple more things we can factor out. So you could just leave your answer like this if you wanted to, but you can get it down to an even simpler, um, to an even simpler form if we pull out some more constant factors. So just for clarity's sake, a gradient here, evaluate at tau equals 1 cap equals 5, it's going to be equal to, so we can go ahead and get a common denominator here of 4 if we want. So we can get, or alternatively right now we could just pull out, as we see we have, there's two methods of doing this. So we could first get a common denominator, add everything together, and then pull out all of the like terms. Or we could first look for what we can pull out right now and then get a common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and do the latter of the two. So it looks like here we have 50 in the numerators I'm looking at. We have 50, 75, 10, and 25. So we can pull out a, a factor of 5 from each of these. So we're going to pull out a factor of 5. So we have on the outside 5 over 16. And 50 divided by 5 is going to be 10 minus uh, 75. So 75 divided by 5 is going to be uh, 15. 15 pi over 4. And then the second component, um, 10 divided by 5 is going to be 2. So 2 pi. So 2 pi minus 25 divided by 5 is 5, so minus 5 pi over 4. So now we can get a common denominator and um, pull out some more stuff. So we have, this is equal to 5 over 16 times, uh, so 10 times 4, we're just getting a common denominator of 4 with everything. So 40 minus 15 pi over 4. 
over 4. And then 2 times 4 is 8, so 8 pi minus 5 pi over 4. And finally, finally, as you see, as you can see here, we can pull out a 1 over 4. So 5 and 16 times 4 is 64. So 5 over 16 times 4, so 5 over 64. And then we have remaining inside of here uh, 40 minus 15 pi, and then 8 pi minus 5 pi is going to be 3 pi. Okay, and that's going to be the simplest we can get it down to, because as you, as you can see, looking here with all these terms, there's nothing more, no more common terms that we can pull out, no more constant factors that are in both of these components. So what we have here as our final answer is going to be 50, uh, excuse me, 5 over 65 times 40 minus 15 pi for the first component and 3 pi for the second component. So that is going to be the gradient of this function here, which is a function of tau and kappa, evaluated at the point tau is equal to 1 and kappa is equal to 5. So that's it for this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. Um, so for more of these problems of the week, to see our playlist, you can click on this link here. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click this link here. And to visit us at centerofmath.org, click this link here. Thank you for watching.